On June 26, 1976, at a venue called Nippon Budokan, a martial arts hall in Tokyo, Japan, Muhammad Ali found himself in uncharted territory, standing opposite professional wrestling megastar Antonio Inoki and about to partake in a prototype fight of what eventually would become mixed martial arts. Though the fight itself didn't deliver what many fans were expecting, it's the history, implications and influence of what the fight meant that should be recognised as an event that not only did a lot for mixed martial arts but also for the world of professional wrestling. I'm Tom from MMA On Point and this is a retrospective, Ali vs Anoki. The origins of the fight against Anoki supposedly came around in April 1975, only months from his famous third and final fight with Joe Frazier at a party in the US. As it goes, Ali was introduced to Ikiro Yada, president of the Japanese Amateur Wrestling Association, and Ali, who was known for his promoter's mindset, apparently bragged to Yada, isn't there any oriental fighter who will challenge me, I'll give him one million dollars if he wins. And of course, this throwaway Ali line made its way into headline news over in Japan, and they ran with it. A challenge was was officially issued and it wasn't long until iron jawed professional wrestler Antonio Inoki accepted. To many outside of Japan, a professional wrestler accepting a throwaway challenge from the heavyweight boxing champion of the world was pure theatrics, an attention grab, but the $10 million that Inoki and his backers were willing to put up onto the table was not. Ali was burning through cash with his various divorces and following his fight with Frazier, it was rumoured that Ali was looking to retire and the $6 million that the Japanese were offering him would make as a good retirement fund. Eventually Ali accepted the 6 million final offer from Inoki's backers and the date was set. Muhammad Ali's history en route to this fight has been well documented, his rise to the heavyweight title and the cultural history he made along the way, but Antonio Inoki, now his history and the skills that he inherited may have played a key role in why the fight ended up as it did. Inoki had once been the protege of legendary professional wrestler and pioneer of realistic pro wrestling Ricky Dozan. Ricky Dozan became immensely popular in Japan by bringing national pride back to the country with a succession of wins against Americans who would usually attempt to cheat. It was in these matches that Ricky Dozan would overcome these cheats by demonstrating a traditional Japanese fighting move and beat the Americans with his fighting spirit. Despite being known and loved for defeating Americans, Ricky Dozan's first major feud was with fellow Japanese star Masahiko Kimura. Masahiko Kimura had risen to fame as a judoka, competing in the sport all over the world and is widely known for defeating Helio Gracie in a judo versus Brazilian jiu jitsu fight, submitting him with a double wrist lock, hence where the name Kimura has derived from in Brazil. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. The wind saw a crowd of Japanese people run over and hoist Kimura up above their heads. And with the legendary win over the Gracies, Kimura was welcomed back to Japan with an offer to compete in a professional wrestling match against Ricky Dozan in his Japan Pro Wrestling Association. And it was orchestrated to see the two men draw and set up a series of rematches. This, however, did not occur. During the fight, Ricky Dozan decided to flip the switch break the work, attack Kimura for real and knock him out cold. Whether or not Ricky Dozan planned to shoot or Kimura provoked him in any way is unclear, but what isn't was the fact that Ricky Dozan just knocked out the man who beat the Gracies. Professional wrestling had triumphed over judo and Ricky Dozan had catapulted himself into greater stardom at the expense of Kimura. Under the tutelage of Ricky Dozan and having adopted a similar realistic looking wrestling style, Antonio Noki on his rise to fame had not been unknown to try similar tactics. During his younger years in Japan Wrestling Association, legendary wrestler Bruno San Martino tells a story of how Inoki attempted to shoot on him during a tag match in 1967 to build his reputation against the then champion. This attack was thwarted by San Martino and the two parted ways professionally forever. Throughout the 60s, Inoki clambered to the top of the Japanese wrestling scene and got so big that in 1971 he was kicked out of the Japanese Wrestling Association for attempting a takeover. From there, Inoki went went out looking for bigger and bigger paydays and also greater fame, ultimately deciding to embark upon the idea of mixed martial arts fighting. In February 1976, only a few months prior to the big battle with Muhammad Ali, Inoki invited two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo Willem Rusker to participate in a professional wrestling versus judo match, which was advertised as a real fight but ended up being nothing more than a poorly executed pro wrestling match, with Inoki winning with three consecutive back suplexes. On hindsight, it seemed obvious that Inoki was treating these scripted mixed martial arts bouts as a warm-up to the big battle with Ali, and coupled with Ali's promotion of the build-up to the fight, and uh, if he can pin me down any time for the count of three, 
he wins the match. Especially with former professional wrestler Freddie Blassie at his side, indicated that Ali thought nothing more of this bout than a scripted performance with a big payday. Especially considering Ali's love for wrestling and crediting his gift of the gab to professional wrestler Gorgeous George. So at what point did this wrestling match shift into what it eventually became? Whether Ali was aware of it himself or not, there are plenty of people who insist that his handlers knew from the moment they signed on to fight Anoki and return for his six million, Ali was supposed to lose. And supposedly the original plan for the finish of the fight was Ali throwing a punch that would accidentally hit the referee and knock him out. Ali would stoop over the referee in concern and while he was distracted, Anoki would knock him down with a kick to the head and then the referee would ultimately come around and count Ali out. Upon learning this, however, Ali refused to take the loss. He had already taken a barrage of abuse from the media, exclaiming that competing in something like this would be disgracing the heavyweight boxing title, so arriving in Japan, after all this promotion, after all this abuse, losing was something that Ali just wasn't prepared to do. There was also speculation that Ali had learnt of the shoots that Anoki had instigated in these professional wrestling matches in the past, how his mentor Ricky Dozan had risen to greater fame at the expense of real athletes who had previously participated in such scripted fights. But according to Anoki's version of the story, the signed agreement was always for the two to engage in a real contest. But upon Ali and his entourage arriving in Japan and seeing Anoki train with brutal kicks and a violent ground game, Ali wanted out. Okay, so when do we do the rehearsal? Ali supposedly asked Anoki, only to get the answer, no, no, this isn't an exhibition, it's a real fight. With several different stories in the air, in the days leading up to the fight, all of a sudden, Ali and Anoki began to renegotiate the rules and a list of restrictions was imposed on Anoki. He would not be allowed to grapple with Ali and would not be able to land any kicks unless he had one knee in contact with the mat, which is ironic considering the current rules. And so the day arrived, June 26th, 1976, and no one knew what to expect. The rules hadn't been distributed to the audience and the first biggest display of early mixed martial arts had somehow formed upon miscommunication. As a prelim to the bout, Chuck Wepner, an American professional boxer, took on Andre the Giant at Shea Stadium in New York City and displayed what many thought would occur in Japan, a scripted wrestling bout that ended with Andre the Giant throwing Wepner out of the ring and ultimately called off due to interference from Gorilla Monsoon. But as the bell rang to the main event, Anoki sprinted over to Ali to deliver a flying leg kick which Ali dodged and that's where the fight remained. Anoki unwilling to stand with the boxing world champion if he was unable to grapple and Ali unwilling to go to the ground with zero ground game knowledge against Anoki. The fight went a full 15 rounds. Ali had thrown six punches and the fight was conveniently announced as a draw. The leg kicks that Anoki threw throughout the fight did, however, leave Ali's legs seriously swollen, which led to an infection. Ali also suffered two blood clots that seriously affected his movements, and amputation was even discussed. Ali's personal doctor, who left him in 1977, refers to these leg kicks as the damage that changed Ali as a fighter, restricting his movements and rendering him unable to knock out any fighter thereafter. Even though these were sitting leg kicks, this kind of damage exposed the world to the value of leg kicks, and young and up-and-coming fighters took great notice, including Marie Smith. During a bus ride around Kobe City ahead of Smith's first mixed bout for Pancras, Ken Shamrock turned to him and said, you're not a fighter, you're a specialized fighter. Smith conceded that Shamrock had a point, a specialized fighter only competes a certain way, a description that fit him as a kickboxer at the time as it fit Ali as a boxer back in 1976. The leg kicks that Anoki threw in the fight rendered the best boxer in the world utterly bewildered, which led Smith on a path to expand his knowledge of fighting outside of just striking. The significance of all of this is that this led Smith to the lion's den where he met Frank Shamrock. The two created a friendship that saw one another trade striking and grappling knowledge, striking being something that the lion's den did small amounts of during training the primary workout being hard wrestling, sparring, and weightlifting. Smith, as a kickboxer, also brought cardiovascular conditioning to Frank's training, and after a few years, the two left the Lions then to form the Alliance, a team made up of fighters of different disciplines, all helping each other to improve in areas of martial arts that they may be lacking. The success of this training propelled Frank Shamrock to the next level, set the mold for the modern mixed martial artist, and ultimately changed the way fighters prepared for upcoming bouts. And all these fighters like Frank and Ken Shamrock and Marie Smith would have never had these fights in Pancrase if it were not for the impact of the Ali Inoki fight. It greatly influenced the Universal Wrestling Federation in Japan, founded by the early stars of Inoki's New Japan Pro Wrestling. UWF also saw Nobuhiko Takada send unanswered challenges to Hicks and Gracie and instigated Yoji Anjo, protege of Takada, to storm Hicks and Gracie's gym in Southern California, which ultimately led to the main event bout between Nobuhiko Takada and Hicks and Gracie at Pride 1. 
one. UWF was marketed as Dojo Pro Wrestling, was a pioneer of shoot style wrestling, established a realistic portrayal of combat and above all made it possible for mixed martial arts circuits to exist and be viable. After its collapse, Masakatsu Funaki and Minara Suzuki would form Pancras in 1993 and Akira Maida would form Fighting Network Rings in 1991, two organizations that produce some of the greats. Needless to say, the Ali Inoki fight kickstarted a movement in Japan that helped craft mixed martial arts as we see it today. It also played a massive part in professional wrestling, as Ali vs Inoki created the boom of closed circuit television, and there is no greater example of closed circuit television than Vince McMahon Jr's WrestleMania 1, a main event featuring Hulk Hogan, Antonio Inoki's greatest rival, and Muhammad Ali himself as the referee. Hey, what is up guys? Jason from MMA On Point here. Thank you for visiting our Patreon page. You'll see that we are looking to do quite a bit with our Patreon and expand to have a bigger team and start doing daily news and articles. Right now, it's just me, Tom, and we have a social media guy, but we are looking to expand that and we feel like we can do that with your help. Hi guys, Tom here. So what we're looking to do is hire more video editors. This means that we can upload more videos each and every week and Jason and I will be writing and voicing everything of course but this helps us do so much more with the YouTube channel. We want to develop our website and begin to add more meaningful content in the form of news and articles. And we also want to travel. Now, I'm not talking about going to Barbados or the Seychelles or having a, a sweet candle lit dinner in some beautiful resort. No, we're talking about going to events. It's not just videos and writing, we want to be there. Interviewing and covering events is officially credentialed members of the press. Our first big event will be International Fight Week for UFC 226. So basically what we're talking about is just $2 if you want to help out. And of course there are bigger tiers if you feel like you can help out from there. But everything you guys give us, it doesn't matter how small it is, makes a huge difference. When we're trying to go to these events, trying to do these cool things, it really does help. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for your time. Uh, join the team if you can and we will see you later.